In this video, we're going to focus on how we can show only a segment of our data in our x-axis based on the time scale. And you can see here, if I move over, this is just exactly 24 hours. It starts at December 18 at 12 midnight, and then eventually it ends here at 12 midnight on December 19. But if you really look carefully here, my entire table here of data, which goes beyond 20 or December 20, and it starts at 16 December. So how can we get just only 24 hour segments in here? Well, in this video, I will show you exactly how. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers question, which is how to restrict the amount of data shown with date and time in Chart.js. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to filter a chart between dates in Chart.js. And if we scroll down here, you can see here, Fo Singh, especially thank you to thank you to Fo for asking the question. This is what Fo asked. Hello, thank you for very much for all these exceptional videos. They really helped me to understand Chart.js. I have a very important question. I use Google Sheets to plot my data with Chart.js following your videos. How to plot only the 24 hour data, but not my whole sheet from beginning to the end. So what he really wants, and even he says here, he wants to, for example, show 24 hours of data only. All right, so let's start to work on that. And by the way, this is a very important note because this video at the time of making was a bit older and I have a more updated video, which I highly recommend, which eventually I pinned here, which has the correct structure. Anyway, I will show at the very end as well this link. So let's start to work. So the first thing what we will need is to get our default code. So our default code, we can get it from chartjs3.com getting started. And you might notice this, for some reason my Google Chrome gives this error. Anyway, I'm going to copy this chunk of code here. Once we copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure to watch this video that explains it all. I'm going to paste that in here. And then I'm just going to cut out the title here, that's for me. Save this, refresh, and there we are. So now we have a bar chart, that's beautiful. What we need to do now is basically start working with the dates. And in your case, you get it from uh, Google Sheets. So that will mean that you probably have there a table. So what I'm going to do here quickly is to build something just with a few lines of code, just very basic data. So for you, it can be, uh, well, you don't have to do this really, but if for anyone else who wants to understand it, it's probably recommended to have something ready. So I'm going to make it very simple. I'm going to see a date, a constant of date equals new date, meaning we're going to create a date based on the current time, date and time of today. So then what I need is I need to push this in a loop and then I'm going to use a for loop to push every hour in here. So eventually we have a large amount of data quickly. So I'm going to say here dates, and then we can just say here constant dates. This is basically our array that will be will be blank. And then we have also data points. So I'm going to say your constant data point equals a blank array. So now what I'm going to do is just to loop through this. And all I will do here is I will say for loop. So for, and I'll say here, let i equals one. And then what I will say here, we keep on looping i as long as it is equal to 100. And then, of course, I++ plus plus for incremental increase. So we have this now here, and then what I want to do is I want to grab here the dates array, let me say here dot push, and you should be familiar with push array, this push array adds up a value into the array. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here new date object, and this new date object will be based on date, which is this, and this basically means today, and then dot value of, and then here what I'm going to do is we're going to just add up here one hour at a time. So I'm going to say here, plus i multiplied by 1000, multiplied by 60, and then again 60. So what is this? 1000 milliseconds, and then we have 1000 seconds for 60 seconds, and then again here, 60 minutes so that's basically one hour so once i did this so basically here the increment it will plus it every time with one hour once i did that then what i want to do as well i want to push here a value because we have here right now this data but there's no data in here then or if we have more data there's nothing of course so i'm just going to make here 
dp, which is a data point, dot push, and then here I'll just say i, meaning it will increment till from 1 till 100. That's basically what I'm doing here. Very straightforward, should be quite familiar for everyone. So if I do now console log, just in case, so to make sure you have a visual, I'm going to say your date, and then I get another one here for the data points. So if I save this now and refresh, open up developer tab, you should see here now two arrays. One array here, 100, this should be all the dates, as you can see here. Right now, it will get what's the current time as of right now here. And you can see here, this is basically the time here. So that's all fine. Next, what I want to do, of course, is to look at the other one here, which will be the values as well. There we are. So we have all of this here, 100 uh, items in our array, 100 here for the dates. And you can see here, if you really look carefully, December 16, which is currently today, and then here, this is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, military time. And then 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, etc., etc. It keeps on going up, and then until we hit here, 0, 0, which is 12 o'clock, and then that's the first day of Friday. All right, so now we have this. Let's start to uh, convert the scale, because what we need to do here, and this is very important, this is the reason why I showed you also to make sure to watch the other updated video, because we're going to work with scale and time scale, and that's in the, in the video here, this video here. At that time, I was not very aware of how this worked, because there were some issues with it, but this was the best thing I could get at a time. However, that's why, I pinned here after it explains it all. Watch this video or else you wanna it will not work. It's very simple. Alright. So what we're going to do here now is basically we need to get in chart.js the item. So what I'm going to do here in chart.js.org, I'm going to get what we call the date adapter. I'm going to click on ecosystem. And in the ecosystem, we're going to scroll down here and we're looking for the adapters. And then I'm going to get here. You have three options. I would recommend you not to use this. Do not use this one. These two are the best to use. This one is deprecated, meaning that currently they're not updating it anymore and probably the support will gradually fade out. The other two are better to use. For me, this one is easier to use but requires two JavaScript files. I, I would only recommend to use this if you're going to use Loxon uh, features because they're easier to use compared to the date FNS features. However, the date FNS feature or the date FNS only uses one JavaScript file. So I'm going to click on that because I don't want to use anything of their features except for one thing. I want to get the adapter, which is if you click on that one, you get this specific chart.js adapter date FNS. You can see here the bundle. That's the one I want. I'm going to copy this link. And then once I have that, we can continue on here, here, paste that in here. Remember, paste it after chart.js library because this one has dependencies that needs to be loaded first in here. All right, so we have this now. So this would mean that we are now able to start working with our uh, dates because it, now it can start to read it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go to copy this, the dates, I'm going to replace this here with the dates and here with the data points, dp. So if I save this right now, it will not work. Or apparently it does. It, Apparently they recognize immediately, but you can see uh, this of course is not really recommended. So we have to solve here this few items. I want to change this here. So what we're going to do here in the scales in the x axis because that's the one we want to target or pinpoint. I want to reduce the length of this because this is absolutely ridiculous. Should not be here. So what we're going to say here, we're going to say your type, which is the type of the scale would be the time which has been created because of the time adapter that we have added, if the date FNS adapter. So then we're going to say your time object, and this time object, I'm going to say unit, and then what I want to do here, unit will be string value hour. So once I did this, make sure you have a comma here, this is all right, save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this, but of course, like what Fo indicated, too many, values here is of course not readable. So how do we reduce this? To reduce this, comma, we need to use min and max. So let's say here min value, and normally in chart.js, if you have a next value, you would do it based on the index. So you would say here, what would be the index of this, that value would be. In this case, it's not the case, or for time, it's different. We need to indicate for the time, what is the minimum time we want to start with. All right, so let's grab the dates here. So you can see here, we have here, um, let's see if we can hover over one, 
December 17. So what I would do is I want to grab from December 17 all up to December 18 midnight basically. So from midnight to midnight. So how do we do this? But we're going to put in here a string value of minimum value 2021. 20, December uh, 17. And then we say your time. I'll just put in a 00. zero. Then again 00, zero and 00. zero. So what is this basically the time here? Three times, this is the hour, the minutes, and the seconds, comma. And then we have here the max value. So this will give us a restriction. And this restriction here, put in here, of course here, 18. So if I save this, we should see now only 24 hour segments. There you are, you can see here. And you can see it's not 100% here in the center because the time is 12, six, and six minutes and some additional seconds. Uh, because we get the time of right now that's basically what we're getting we can but i assume that if you have it from your database you probably have a hard-coded time maybe exactly 12 midnight sharp or 12 zero 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 anyway we can see here now we have all of this up till december 18 which is also till midnight so if you want another segment of 28 over uh, 24 uh, hours so you can do here just the next day, if I save this and let's first hover over this value, you can see it is December 18, 2021, 12 o'clock and 6 minutes. If I refresh here now, we're back here on December 21, or, or sorry, 18 December 2021, and now 12 o'clock and 7, uh, 7 minutes. But you can see here the value is 35, and we go here, now we are hitting here till 19 December. And that's basically how you can play around with the time. So this is really how you do min and max value on the time segments. Very important. Remember this, date plus time. So if you like this video, I highly recommend you to watch the other video which I indicated. And that's basically this video here. It's called How to Filter Dates in Chart.js, which is a more newer version here. You can uh, watch this one here as well. And you can see all this information. Or this was... This one was made on November 4. Very important, make sure you watch this one compared to the older one, because the older one here will, will, will not work because it doesn't have the date adapter feature in here. So that's very important to remember. So make sure you watch this video. The link will pop up here as well right now.